with GNOME and KDE both folding to Wayland for quite a number of years now, and GNOME migrating away from the X11 session with the full removal coming in GNOME 50. Obviously, some distros have been shipping it without X11 for a few releases earlier. And then the same thing happening on the KDE side, just on a longer time scale. There are distros already shipping without the X11 session, but support is technically being kept around in some form until 2027. The release where it's being removed is in 2026, but it's going to have a longer support window than you would normally see. And of course, there's going to be LTS distros that have either GNOME or KDE with the X11 session until, you know, sometime mid-2030. You know, if it's an LTS for Ubuntu, for example, look, by the time you get there, they've probably extended the LTS window for another 5 or 10 years just to keep 1404 supported, but that's a whole separate issue. When you're running an up-to-date distro, running up-to-date software, the desktops are moving away from X11. This is just the mainstream direction that Linux desktops are going. Even for smaller desktops like Budgie, for example, that is going Wayland. And then others like XFCE, Mate, Cinnamon, they're certainly lagging behind. And the Cinnamon Wayland session is not in a great state just yet, but they are all moving in that direction when they're going to be ready with it. Only time will tell. Then you have the window managers that are actually getting more popular, being Wayland only. Things like Hyperland and Neri. There is still obviously people using the X11 window managers, but they're not getting more users. It's the people that were already using them that are kind of just sticking around with them. With all of that being said, I have seen this growing trend of people saying, Wayland is being forced on me. I hate Wayland. Stop forcing me to use it. And I do understand concerns with the current state of things, making sure that things are actually being fixed before the X11 session is removed. Totally makes sense. Reporting problems. All that stuff is great. But what I mean is trying to frame this Wayland migration as this sort of big conspiracy that you personally have no control over. This is something where it's being injected into your machine and you can't stop it. You just have to use Wayland. Everything is being taken away. Acting like you don't have complete control over the software that is run on your Linux system going into project spaces and telling devs how much they suck for moving over to Wayland. And you know what? Telling a dev you hate them because they're moving to Wayland, because the project they run is moving to Wayland, isn't going to convince them to continue supporting X11. So something I'm sure all of you have heard and probably have said a number of times is Linux is about choice. Now, it's not really an accurate statement. A lot of people sort of take this to mean a lot more than it really should. It doesn't mean, you know, you're my code slave and you have to write whatever I want to use. But there is some reality to the phrase, Linux is about choice. It doesn't mean you have the choice to do anything you want with software because someone has to write the software. But you do have choice in the software that you run on your system. And it seems like there is this growing contingent of people that want to pretend like that power doesn't exist, want to pretend like you don't have the ability to do this, right? Let's say you're on Windows or you're on Mac OS, and they decide, oh, we're going to change some core system component that breaks some really important thing you need. Let's say it was something to the equivalent of a migration to Wayland. Obviously, Wayland isn't a thing over on the uh, Windows side. There actually is someone who made a macOS Wayland compositor. Maybe I'll talk about that in another video. But if some core system changes on Windows or Mac, you've basically got three options. One, you go use the old, most likely EOL version that is not getting security patches, that is not being worked on, that is just not a good idea to use. Two, you do what most people do, and you whine, and you complain, and you basically just suck it up. 
because you don't have anywhere else to go. You don't have anything else you can run because you need to be on that operating system. Or three, you leave and use a different operating system. But that third option of leaving is a lot more powerful on the Linux side because you don't have to leave Linux. In many cases, you don't even have to leave your distro if you're willing to compile some code. Sometimes things are packaged, sometimes they're not. But you have this freedom to choose what you want to run. If your distro is offering something that you don't want to use, you don't have to use it. That doesn't mean that they have to support the thing that you want to be using. But if you're using a project that doesn't align with your goals, you have the power to use a different project. And this is the core thing I want to talk about. No one can take X11 away from you. There are people out there laughing as if they have this power, laughing as if they can just remove X11 from existence. And these people are trying to rage bait morons on the internet. But the code exists and the code will always exist and there will be distros that package Xorg or whatever other X11 server happens to exist at the time, basically until the end of time, or until it doesn't compile on hardware anymore. Do you actually think Debian is dropping Xorg anytime soon with the tons of random little window managers they have in their repos? Or Arch Linux? Or Gen 2? Or if Arch Linux does drop it, it's going to be maintained by someone in the AUR. And if someone doesn't, you can maintain it in the AUR. Or let alone the countless random little distros for old hardware or just countless protest distros out there that don't want to support the modern thing. They're not going to stop packaging Xorg. No one can take it away from them. And this idea that anybody has the ability to just remove X11 from existence? No. No one can do that. And if you hate Waylon, and if you think Waylon is a bad idea, and you think Waylon is a bad direction, and you don't want to see Waylon adopted, stop using it. You have complete control of the software you run on your system. Now you might say, oh, but I'm a GNOME or a KDE user, and I want to use X11 with these environments. And I understand that this might not be the nicest thing to say. I understand that you're going to actually have to make a choice in your life, but... Tough shit, right? Sometimes things don't go your way in life, and sometimes you don't get to use the things that you want to use because nobody's making it, nobody is writing it, and nobody wants to support the thing that you want without you being willing to pay them a support contract. Sometimes we don't get the thing we want, and instead we have to make do with the best choice available, the best option available that is as close to the thing we want. And there are forks of these projects on X11, but like at the end of the day, somebody has to write the code. There is a fork of KDE 6 pre-X11 going by Sonic DE. I don't know if it's gonna be around long term, it's only been around for a couple of weeks at this point. Still hard to say exactly where it's going to go. But somebody has to do that. And you can run an EOL desktop. If you want to do that, hey, nothing is stopping you. You can do that as well. But if you want something where new features are continually being added, someone needs to do that. And the code is not going to be written in projects that don't want to support Wayland. No matter, like how angry you get about it, no matter how many angry messages you send, you're not going to convince GNOME to bring back X11 or KDE to not drop the X11 side because the developers of these projects, this is the route they want to go. And if you disagree with that route, you have the power to fork something, you have the power to support forks that exist, and you should do everything in your power to go and support those projects. If you support X11 and you want it to be something where people take seriously long into the future, that people give up on Wayland and want to come back to X11, what you need to do 
is go use these desktops. Go support these desktops. Go support the projects that want to stick on X11. Go, you know, make patches for them. Support them monetarily. Go and promote them. Make videos about them. Make documentation. Help with translation. Go and actually show people that there is interest in X11 still, and there is an ecosystem of users who want to keep this software updated. For me, and for most other people out there at this point, Wayland is just a better option. And I know that's uncomfortable for some people to hear, but that's the way it is. I am going to continue promoting Wayland. I am going to use Wayland. And if something cool shows up for X11, hey, I'll be happy to use it. But I'm not going to encourage any people to use X11 as their main thing, as their first thing, because I think right now Wayland offers a better experience. With all the rough edges, yes, I understand the rough edges, but for me, it is just a better experience. But I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to tell anyone to stop using the thing they love, the thing they support. Something that is a better option for them, that they feel more comfortable using, you should use it. It is your system, and you should use it in a way that you feel the most comfortable doing running the software that you want to run on your system. But if you actually care about X11 sitting around and whining that your desktop is removing X11 support is not going to bring it back. You have to go and get involved in these projects if you want to keep it around. You have to go and actually support them. You have to go and fork these projects that are removing X11 and then maintain a fork that goes in the direction that you want to go. Because the only way the open source world actually functions is by people getting involved in some way. It doesn't always mean writing code, right? If somebody else is writing the code and you want to support them through documentation or monetarily, you can do that as well. But if nobody's writing the code, you have to be the person that goes and writes the code. Somebody has to do that. Otherwise, it's just not going to exist. Nobody forces you to install something on your Linux system that you don't want to have installed. Maybe that means installing a new desktop package. Maybe if the desktop you want to use with X11 or Xorg entirely is not on your distro, maybe that means if you don't want to go and compile the package yourself, changing distros. You worked out how to install Linux. You worked out how to use Linux all of this time. You don't have to give up using the thing that you want to use just because the distro you're on or the desktop you're on says, we're going to no longer do the X11 thing. If you think X11 is the better way to do things, go somewhere else. Go to a distro that supports it. Go to a desktop that supports it and go and support that project yourself. Now, I'm sure no matter what I say, there are going to be people who still want to just go and argue that, oh, well, they should keep supporting it, even though they don't want to go and support it, because I said they should support it. But if you want some actual workable advice, there's my workable advice. Anyway, um, let me know your thoughts down below. If you prefer X11, why do you prefer it? And what are your plans as the major desktops are dropping it? Were you even using a major desktop? Are you going to use a fork? Were you using a window manager? I would love to know. So, if you like the video, go like the video. If you really like the video, go subscribe and really, really, really like the video. And you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, Stelly Barapé, linked in the description down below that's gonna be it for me and summer has truly started here i need to go and turn my air conditioner on